Most people know that Louis Anderson won an Emmy for his role on Baskets in 2016 for playing a version of his mother. What people might not know is Louis had already won a daytime Emmy back in 1998. He won for playing a younger version of himself and his father on Life with Louis. However, originally, Louis Anderson wanted absolutely nothing to do with this animated show. Here's co-creator Matthew O'Callaghan on the origin of the classic cartoon show, Life with Louis. So how it came about was um, I was working at a place for, called Hyperion and uh, currently working on another TV show that I created. Going back, I had first done a theatrical short called The Itsy Bitsy Spider, and that had Jim Carrey in it. Before that, I was working on a feature that had Rodney Dangerfield in it. So. My boss at the time, Tom Wilhite, I think was talking to Louie and was a fan and, and thought he was super talented. And Louie said, yeah, I'd be interested in doing something in animation. And so he introduced us because he said to Louie, you should meet Matt because he's worked with other comics like Rodney and Jim Carrey. And so, uh, you know, we had coffee and he didn't really have any. <laughs> I, thought he, I thought he'd come in with an idea and he didn't come in with an idea. He just sat down and said, I thought it would be fun to do a character that went, (laughs) and I'm like, okay, let me think about that. And so um, after we talked for a while and there was literally no idea at all, and I think I was busy on something else. That's why I was like, hey, just meet him and see if there was a connection. I don't know if there was an immediate connection, but I started doing some research on Louie, started watching some specials and stand up or whatever I could find at that time. I was kind of intrigued with just his his stand up because at the time now this is uh, early 90s and that was, you know, Eddie Murphy raw that you know, so there was a lot of comics that were really pushing the boundaries in regards to content and, you know, swearing and it was really just off the charts. And I thought it was interesting that Louie didn't not even swear, but his content was relatively clean. And he was hysterical. And I'm like, oh, this guy's interesting because he's not just caving into whatever the fad is. You know, and he was a well-established comic here. It wasn't like he was a new up-and-comer. He maybe had never done anything in animation, but he certainly was well-established. So then I came up with an idea and went back to him and, and talked to him about hey, what do you think about doing something with your family? Because you talk a lot about your family in your act. He said, no, I don't want to do my family. I was like, well, why? And then he was actually pretty articulate about it. He said, you know what? When I'm on stage and I do my family, it's me. Nobody edits it. Nobody's writing my material. It's my memories. It's my characterization of my family. And it's precious ground for me. Nobody touches it. And I said, okay, fair enough. I respect that. So I went away and um, did a couple things. One is um, I did some drawings of him as a kid. Now, when you're doing caricatures, you tend to caricature. So you're pushing and pulling what the person looks like. So Louis was a stocky guy. Well, he was beyond stocky. So I imagine him as a little pudgy kid. And with the same facial features that he has now as had as an adult. And so then I went back to him and I said, okay, because these are caricatures and I don't know how he's going to react to this, I want to meet him in a public place in case he goes off on me <laughs> and I'm safe. So we went to uh, the Formosa Cafe in um, West Hollywood and I brought these drawings in and I sat down with him and it was, you know, just after lunchtime. So it was still fall. And I pull out these color rough sketches of him and I pitch my idea. And the idea is, hey, let's do your childhood. I don't want him to do my childhood. Let's do your childhood. You're Louie. You do the voice of Louie. You also do the voice of your dad, just like you do in your stand-up. And you also do your voice as a narrator. And you're telling stories of your past. I, went, I elaborated a little bit more on that. He goes, I don't want to do that. 
And I pull out these drawings and he's staring at these drawings completely silent. Like I thought he was just going to erupt. And he literally got up off of the chair and walked around the restaurant and went up to total strangers. And he'd say, hey, my name is Louie. Does this look like me? And these people would look down at the drawing, look up at him, and they'd burst out laughing. they go, oh, my God, it's just like you. And then he wouldn't say anything. He'd go to the next table and the next table and the next table. And then he sat down and says, what do you want to do with this? And I said, okay, let's let's put this together. Uh, I want to respect you and your stories and your and I'm going to be listening and you and I can piece together your stories but true be true to your your dad and your your mom and your your whole family I didn't want to tell little tiny you know baby stories I wanted to tell good stories and I wanted to treat Louis kind of the way he is he's a very insightful guy he was very um, aware of the surroundings He knew who he was, he knew what his limitations were, and he knew he was a big guy. And I wanted to carry that in in the show. But he also has a dry wit, and he was sarcastic. When you looked at Louis, he kind of looked like he was in pain. You know, what I've learned from a lot of comics is there is there was a lot of pain in there. And he wrote books about it. And his dad, although he admired him and loved him, His dad was um, kind of emotionally abusive. You know what I mean? It was rough. Obviously, we couldn't do that in a children's cartoon. But what we could do was give Louis a lot of uh, attitude. I'm a 40-year-old in an 8-year-old body, and I have real emotions, and I kind of carry the world on my back. And so, therefore... The eyes are half-lidded. There's a sarcasm to him. He doesn't look happy all the time. And out of that, I was able to get a lot of great humor out of it. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I just loved the essence of that character. Here's where I come from, and I even said this to Louis. I said, okay, here's the thing is, we're completely opposites. I said, you are one of 11 children. Um, I am one of two. I said, your dad was kind of emotionally abusive and your mom was, you know, a little bit kind of would roll with it. She would hear things, but she didn't really react the way you would think a mother would, like she wouldn't shut down the father or whatever. And she just kind of rolled with it, did whatever she could. My parents were the complete, you know, opposite. My dad, you know, loving marriage, loving kids. He he loved his kids. He loved his family. He supported us. And so that we were completely different. And I said, but I said, what's what's the common bond between us? Was well, family and the importance of family. And then even though Louis's parents and the way he grew up was different than mine, there was still love in the family. It was just there was a di- different way of showing it. So I just thought that was a great playground for me to work in, to be able to take the background of Louis, take the background of me and put them together. So you would get the sarcasm, you'd get the humor, you would get, you know, the dry looks, and but then you would always get the warmth. And so I was trying to always add the warmth. And my take was dad could be raise his voice, he could yell, he could be sarcastic, but he always did the right thing. He always did the right thing. He he could complain about going to the Christmas tree lot, but he would go. He could complain about putting lights up on the neighbor's house, but he did it. He would complain about going to school, but he would take the kid to school. He would complain about in-laws coming over, but he would take care of them and treat them like a king. That's how he got around that show. That's how it worked. So what I did was um, I took a couple bits from his act. So I intercut it with my drawings. And so I'd cut to him on the stage and he'd be telling the story. And then when he'd go into his voices, I would show my drawings, you know, and then we'd show his dad you know, at the Christmas tri- tree a lot. You know, when I was a kid, we didn't have uh, Christmas stands. We had to take turns holding that tree. And you would cut to Louie's reaction like, 
seriously. But that's what worked. And it was really great. And I put this little still drawings together and I intercut it with his act. And that's what we took the show out to go sell it. It did take well over a year to sell. At the time, there really wasn't a market for adult comedy. I think in today's market, we would have probably pushed it as more of a primetime thing because we we would go in and um, Louie and I and Tom Wilhite and uh, the three of us would, you know, take our act on the road and we would go to different places and we went to all the places, Disney, Nickelodeon, you know, anywhere that uh, would listen to us. Pretty much everybody said, yeah, I don't get it. Bunch of kids in a playground, family. Does he have a superpower? You know, does he have a cape? Like, how are we going to make toys? Like, you know, they didn't get it at all. They didn't get it at all. At the time, nobody wanted us until Margaret Lesh over at Fox. She saw it and she said, this is unique. This is interesting. And she put it on the air. It was a big success. So back in those days, they would... uh do the ratings, uh, and they would do it in two different ways. They would do overall Saturday morning ratings, and then they would do the ratings on your time slot and compare it to the other shows on the air. So the overall ratings of the entire Saturday morning the cartoon, the show was always two or three, number two or three, no matter what. It, it did work. So we were very proud of it. Right. Let me tell you about my family. Despite its success, only 39 episodes of Life with Louie were made, as Matthew O'Callaghan will explain. From my uh, understanding, we had done uh, three seasons and we wanted to do the full 65 for syndication. But uh, for some reason, um, Fox, or at the time we had heard Haim Saban, who was running Fox, you know, just canceled it because... Rumor has it, allegedly, it wasn't one of his shows. It wasn't the, you know, Power Rangers or or Mighty Morphin something bugs. It was something else. Beetle bugs or beetle. I can't remember the name of it. But it wasn't one of his shows. And I think he just just ended it. Don't know why. Even though it, you know, at the time it, it, uh, A, I told you how successful it was. And B, there was sort of a mandate from each of the from the networks that you had to fulfill some, you know, educational content within the within the show. And we had won Genesis Awards, Humanitas Awards. Louis won two Emmys for his voice performance. So we were um, very well uh, recognized, and um, we were doing a lot of educational types of content within the show. And. And it just ended. <laughs> 